Update. Husband lying about finances. Original post. The title is basically the story. I am also to blame for this, I realize that. We divided household responsibilities pretty evenly, but we don't split every responsibility down the middle, and finances were his job. He's better at them. I thought he was better at them. Now we are $50,000 in credit card debt, I did not know about this. $50,000 on a home equity loan, I did know about this, two months behind on our mortgage, and severely behind on a car payment. I quit my job when we decided to have my middle child three years ago, then we had our youngest a year ago. I thought we were fine, we should have been fine. I don't understand what the hell happened, or why he waited so long to tell me. I trusted him completely. I would never have believed this. I love him so much. By all accounts, we had an ideal marriage. Or we did, I thought we did. I have no idea how we ever come back from this. It will take years to pay this off. I am in school full time, but will need to drop out because we can obviously no longer afford childcare while I'm in class. That just sets us back even more because my earning potential is lower. The most messed up part is that my dad did this exact same thing to my mom. It was awful to live through as a teenager. It was a serious contributor in being resistant to commitment or ever relying on anyone for anything. My husband obviously knew about this. It was my number one reservation when I was quitting my job. I can't believe I was so stupid. This is my worst fear coming true and I have no idea what to do. Edit. I don't know why everyone is making up that my kids are in daycare full time, but they are not. I pay a babysitter while I take one class on campus. Our oldest is in public school and our younger two in home with me. I am going to community college and 75% of my classes are online, the rest are at night. There is no daycare bill. It's literally a $300 a month expense and it should have worked. We are not living large here. I cook everything from scratch. We don't get takeout. I clothe diaper. I buy the kids clothes secondhand or get hand-me-downs. Our cars aren't new. Our mortgage is very reasonable. We cut all of the extras when I stopped working because my job would hardly have paid for daycare. There is no reason his income should not have been enough. I don't know what he spent money on but it clearly wasn't our bills. My husband makes 140 k a year, I was making 30 k We had no credit card debt when I quit my job. Our mortgage and home equity load combined are $2,000 per month. Our car payments combined are $500 a month. I know Reddit thinks women asexually produce children and then force men to support them, but my husband enthusiastically wanted children as well and had an equal role in creating them. My salary would not have justified the cost of daycare. We both did the numbers 100 different ways and it should have worked. It should still be working. I don't know what the heck he's spending money on or if this even the extent of the issue. But I didn't just frivolously spend money like a freaking idiot. I bust my butt to keep our expenses low. The plan was that I would finish school and start working again by the time my middle kid was in kindergarten so we would have only one child in daycare. It was a good plan. It would have worked. I don't know what happened and I'm terrified to find out. Now for the top advice before reading he updates. Regardless, he is doing one of two things. You guys have a lifestyle that his job can't afford and he used the credit card to make up the difference. Or, he is purchasing stupid things and has a gambling problem. Either way, you always need to be involved in the finances. Always. Don't forget the possibility of drugs. What did he spend 50k on? Grubhub, like everyone else. It's gotten to a point that when I go out drinking, I have to delete DoorDash from my phone so I don't drunkenly order $75 worth of Mexican food at 1 in the morning. Everyone says get the Dash Pass, so I did. That had the opposite effect of saving money. So now, I'm only allowing myself to order twice a month with freedom. The biggest thing I'd want to know is how he got there in the first place. I feel that that would make or break it for me. 50k in CC debt on what? Did he overestimate cost of living and his job doesn't cover the bills? Did he take it out and gamble? Did he spend on frivolous things? All of that information is crucial. Did he lose his job and tried to cover with credit cards until it went out of hand? He got those credit cards unbeknownst to OP and he cut her access off the bank account. Maybe it's not because he did not want her to see the expense. Maybe he did not want her to see there were no money coming in. I speculate and I feel bad because it's much worse than if he had spent all the money on online gambling. Now for the first update. I'm going to post this here and I'll come back and respond individually later on. Maybe tomorrow. When I posted this, I had literally just learned about how bad it was. I spent the day going through everything and talking to my husband. He's cheating on me. The woman has two kids and I guess he's been helping her with them. They could be his for all I know. He's currently vomiting and crying in the bathroom. 
so that's freaking great. I unfortunately have to stay married to him long enough to figure out the finances. I am talking to a bankruptcy lawyer on Monday. Thank you everyone who made me feel a little less alone today. Oh my god. This is so awful. I am so, so, so sorry all of this is happening. I strongly urge you to consult a divorce attorney before the bankruptcy attorney. A divorce attorney will be able to tell you how to best proceed on the bankruptcy. You may even be able to negotiate that all the debt is is in the divorce and you won't have to actually file bankruptcy. Commenting for visibility as well. OP, you might be able to save yourself and save your children a fraction of the pain you went through due to credit card debt. I'm so sorry you're dealing with this. Please speak to a divorce attorney Monday as well. Someone who practices in your county and does nothing other than divorce-related issues. It's important that before you make any financial decisions about bankruptcy, that you have legal advice about what would and wouldn't be impacted by divorce. Please cover your butt and see what's possible before dealing with his mess as a team. Also don't be above using his guilt against him to try to get him to agree to separation of responsibility of this debt if you need to in order to rebuild your life. He made financial choices that shouldn't be falling on the both of you, and if he cares about you at all, he owes you an out from this debt. Now for the second update. 47 days ago, I posted about finding out my husband has been lying about our finances and that we are financially screwed. That was just the tip of the iceberg as it turns out. After I spoke to him trying to figure out how this was possible, he admitted to having a second family. He's been cheating on me and has two kids with this lady. The best part? She's his second cousin and they've been in love since high school. What even is my life? The debt is worse than I initially thought. It's $100,000 in credit card debt and there could be more. Who knows at this point? I guess his cousin had a good job but lost it over COVID and that's when he started trying to pay bills for both households. I've hired a divorce lawyer who is going through everything so I can figure out a path forward. He's staying with his mistress cousin and his children, are they also his cousins? And I guess finally living his dream. We've agreed it's best that our children don't stay there right now. All of the kids are having trouble adjusting, but our oldest is 8, so he has some understanding of what is going on. It's just gutting me. Luckily we have a load of equity in our house, as we bought it cheap and did a lot of the labor of fixing it up ourselves. It's going to hurt me to no end to sell this house, but it should be enough to let us pay off most of what we need to pay off and go our separate ways. I started bartending again, which isn't exactly glamorous. It should get me and the kids through the next two years while I finish school. My ex-husband has so far said he would prefer the kids live with me and he will pay me child support. I guess we'll see how that goes. My lawyer is also going to handle a custody agreement. If you had told me 48 days ago that this would be my future, I would have laughed. Some mornings I still wake up feeling like it's not real. I am assuming at some point I will get very sad about this, but right now it's so ridiculous that I can't feel anything but a sick sort of humor. From the outside, and even from the inside, we look like a boring, happy couple. You never know what's really happening behind closed doors I guess. A lot of things finally make a lot of sense now. I thought he traveled for work one weekend a month. I've always thought it was weird but it's always been that way, as long as I've known him. He doesn't travel for work. He spends that weekend with her. He gets a very generous amount of personal days and vacation, which he was always extremely reluctant to use. Except he wasn't reluctant to use them. He just used all of them to spend time with her and their children. As for the work phone and work computer. Nope. Personal devices that he used to hide what was going on. I have started to feel bad for her in a way, because she must have lived such an incomplete life all of these years. And her children, I can't imagine. Anyway, I just wanted to post an update. So many of you were so wonderful that day I posted, which was one of the worst days of my life. One day maybe I'll write a book after I've sorted out all of the insane details. I'll update again if the plot thickens before then lol. Girl, what the hell? Seconded. Holy hillbilly Alabama freaking heck. Divorce split as he gets to keep the debt, and you should keep the house. Western Pennsylvania, so yup. Before you sell anything, see what could be written off in the divorce settlement as his expenses. The money he spent on his affair partner is technically half yours, and him spending lavishly on his affair buddy is taking resources away from your family. You can ask your lawyer about disbursement of marital assets and CO the affair partner in the court case. The courts may be able to take them to task for doing this to you, especially since you have kids, as this is like textbook disbursement. He literally bankrupted your family for his affair partner. If they charge for that over there, he's going down 100%. If you're lucky, most of the debt incurred will be his responsibility since he spent it outside your marital arrangement. If you're extra lucky, she has to come account for how much he spent on her for her bills per court summons. 
If you aren't, nothing changes, except possibly outing his affair with his cousin. Which is his fault to be honest. Best of luck. I hope you nuked his family with the info. For real. And I hope you use a co-parenting app and keep the rest of the communication through your lawyer. And I really hope you put him to all mutual friends and acquaintances. Additionally, I hope you make sure to recoup any and all money he spent on this second family during your marriage through the divorce. And I sure hope you've filed for child support before she does. I'm sure you have a lawyer who is directing you on all this, but I can't help but have second-hand rage on your behalf. I'm so sorry this has happened to you and your kids. As for your piece of crap incestuous husband and his pos cousin, I hope they both get a lifelong case of shingles and ED. What the hell? Where is the rest of his family in all of this? Also, have you spoken to your divorce lawyer yet? I have to wonder if there is some sort of case for fraud against him somewhere. Also depending on what state you're in, you could sue the cousin for alienation of affection. My lawyer said there is a lot to unravel, but that I will likely not be responsible for at least some of the debt. My husband's mother died when he was 14, and his father is an alcoholic so we don't see much of him. He has one sister who lives across the country and I've only met a handful of times. He was close with his dad's brother, who much older than his dad. The cousin he is involved with is that man's daughter's daughter. I think that's second cousin. Overall, their family isn't very close. Except for the two of them I guess. OP I'm begging you to talk with another lawyer because my ex took out a bunch of business loans in my name that he defaulted on. In our divorce settlement, he had to take on the entire outstanding balance. There is zero reason you should be responsible for a single penny of debt that was spent on his other family. Also, your ex is a disgusting human. Has he completely abandoned you and your kids? Is he going to leave you high and dry? How could he be so cruel? Did he say he only married you as cover for their relationship? I'm just so so sorry. It might be best for you and your kids to take whatever child support he pays and just move to the other side of the country and never see him again. He can't possibly be a decent influence on your kids. I just wouldn't them involved with the cousin mom and cousin siblings. That's just too traumatic. This is one case where they are better off having zero relationship. Last story. I secretly agree with my ex-husband that I was the reason we separated. And I'm dying inside each day seeing my son growing up in two homes because of it. I know all the talk and I know all the support I get and I appreciate it all. I know my husband cheating was all him and it leading to our separation is only natural. But when I got pregnant and gave birth to my son, he became my world. I still loved my husband dearly, but I just loved and enjoyed being a mother. When my baby was 10 months old, I found out that my husband has cheated on me with a friend. It broke me down and I thought I would die with grief. The divorce was finalized last month. Our son is three and a half years old now and has started living with his dad every other week. This made my ex-husband and I see more of each other. We both wanted the transition to shared custody to be smooth and my ex-husband spent a lot of time with us to school and our son to this new arrangement. My son could be with his daddy for a whole day, but when it came to wanting to sleep, nobody else was good enough but me. Now he is used to daddy too. It is wonderful and painful at the same time. Wonderful, because I want our son to have both his parents' love, but the weeks without him are painful. My ex-husband and his girlfriend broke up. I never asked why, but last time I met my husband, he stayed for coffee after dropping our son. He started crying bitter tears, telling me how I neglected him and it ruined us, and now his girlfriend left him because she doesn't believe he loved her like he did me. I know he is raging mad and trying to put the blame on everyone else but himself, but I have been obsessively thinking that he was probably right, and I did neglect him. I have since he cheated lost 60 pounds. Yes, the majority of it was because of the grief I felt after he left, but I lost it all the same. When I lost the weight, I started working out because it was easier now. Six hours a week at least. I never did it while we were married. I now loved what I saw in the mirror and I dressed accordingly. Beautiful dresses, tight clothes and high heels. I started going out more because being single meant that I didn't have the same access to love and affection, so I had to go out and compensate with friends or maybe the occasional flirting. I thought about his words. Probably, if he hadn't cheated, I would be that same happy woman with some extra weight on, who is too content, her needs fulfilled, to make an effort. I let myself go because I was happy and I lost my happiness. Now I have everything to be happy except happiness itself. Somehow, I don't blame my ex-husband, or at least I don't put all the blame on him. I was his accomplice in ruining our son's life. Now for the top comments. Don't you think you're being hard on yourself? And don't catastrophize. Words of power. It's catastrophizing to say you ruined your child's life. You didn't ruin your child's life. Millions of kids grow up in homes of divorce and they turn out fine. 
You have this picture in your head that you'd have had the June Cleaver happy home if you hadn't divorced. It's not true. You and the girlfriend got the same man. If he felt neglected by you, he could have communicated that to you. You just had a baby, of course your attention shifted. I'm sorry to say this, but the only way your marriage would have lasted was if you accommodated his cheating. Good on you for not doing so. This reminds me of a comment made more than once by my father. He said when I was born, all my mother's love went to me. She had a terrible pregnancy and both of us almost died and I remained in an ICU for a few weeks and he didn't have the patience to just be present and help my mom. He cheated constantly and demolished her self-esteem and she loved him and he was too selfish and thought only about his own needs constantly. It obviously made her focus on me more so she didn't have to think or deal with the pain he was causing her. They eventually broke up when I was four and she never said a single bad word to me about how much he hurt her. I only found out as an adult, but I experienced the selfishness firsthand growing up, so it wasn't a far stretch of the imagination when she started opening up to me about it all. OP, your ex-husband is selfish, and don't blame yourself for his infidelity. All he needed to do was communicate with you, and if he really cared, then you both could have gone to therapy to discuss how you both felt. There is no excuse for cheating. None. OP, get into therapy and live your best life. Oh hell no. Put that thought in a coffin, chain it close, push it into the deep dark sea, and then hit it with an air-to-water explosive. Don't you dare take responsibility for his infidelity. Neglecting him for six months or a year to focus on your kid does not mean a green light to cheat. Why didn't he say something? Why didn't he suggest therapy or counseling? No freaking way. Kick him out next time he opens his mouth and tell him to go be irresponsible somewhere else.